Thank you, Mr. President. May I begin by thanking Under Secretary General Voronkov and Acting Executive Director Chen for their respective briefings. I also thank Martin Evie of the Institute for Security Studies for his insights. It is clear from the report of the Secretary General under consideration that terrorist threats are on the rise globally. It is our considered conviction that terrorism in one part of the world is a threat to the peace and security of the entire world. And therefore, our response to this global challenge should be unified, coordinated, and most importantly, effective. Given this background, it is puzzling to us that the SG's report chose not to take notice of the activities of the several proscribed groups in this region, especially those that have been repeatedly targeting India. Selective filtering of inputs from member states is uncalled for. We do hope that in future iterations of SG's reports, inputs from all member states would be treated on an equal footing. The SG's report also outlines the fact that terrorist groups with linkages to ISIL and Al-Qaeda are gaining in strength in Africa, targeting civilians, especially women and children, as well as security forces and UN peacekeepers. We appreciate the efforts of the countries of the region to take measures to combat this menace and call upon the international community and the UN to support these efforts without any caveats. ISIL's expansion in Africa deserves the full attention of the international community to ensure that this threat is not seen in isolation, as these have the potential to spill over to other parts of the world as well. Mr. President, you may recall that last year, on the occasion of the commemoration of the 20th anniversary of the dastardly 9-11 attacks, the External Affairs Minister of India had given a series of suggestions on jointly combating terrorism. Building on those suggestions, I would like to offer the following observations. One, the growing use of the internet and social media platforms to spread terrorist and violent extremist propaganda has posed challenges to governments and the tech industry alike. The continued increase in the use of new technologies to move and store funds, including virtual assets, online exchanges and wallets, privacy coins, and potential misuse of dual-use technologies pose the risk that terrorists will seek to abuse these systems for terrorism financing and other terror-linked purposes. There is therefore a need for intense discussion on this subject. I am pleased therefore to inform you that India, as the chair of the Counter-Terrorism Committee, will be hosting a special session in Mumbai and Delhi on 28-29 October this year, highlighting the nature of this threat, member states' capacity gaps, as well as best practices, and exploring further course of action to effectively deal with this threat. The high-level meeting will be in person, and I invite all Council colleagues to participate at the meeting. Formal invitations will be issued by the Chair later this month. Two, we need political will to defeat terrorism. There can be no justification for terrorist acts, much less glorification of terrorists, a tendency we have unfortunately seen in recent years in some parts of the world. There should be no double standards in dealing with terrorists. We should refrain from labeling terrorism based on motivations, which will only allow opportunistic forces to provide justification for certain terror activities based on their convenience. Three, an effective functioning of the sanctions committees requires them to become more transparent, accountable, and objective. The practice of placing holds and blocks on listing requests without giving any justification must end. It is most regrettable that genuine and evidence-based listing proposals pertaining to some of the most notorious terrorists in the world are being placed on hold. Double standards and continuing politicization have rendered the credibility of the sanctions regime at an all-time low. We do hope that all members of the Council can pronounce together in one voice sooner rather than later when it comes to this collective fight against 
international terrorism. Four, linkages between terrorism and organized crime need to be addressed. In India, we've had first-hand experience of crime syndicates venturing into terrorism and immediately thereafter getting state hospitality in a neighboring country, despite being listed under the Council 1267 sanctioned committees. Such hypocrisy needs to be collectively called out when the threat of terrorism looms large in each of our countries. Five, we need to support capacity building efforts of the UN Office for Counterterrorism and enhance its autonomy. India has been supporting these efforts by providing financial support and resources for the programs of the office aimed at countering terror financing and preventing terrorist movement. We reiterate our call for providing greater financial support and adequate resources to the UN Office for Counterterrorism from the regular UN budget. Mr. President, India has suffered from the menace of terrorism for decades and has learned to counter this threat with resolve and firm determination. We hope that the international community will stand united in addressing this threat to humanity with zero tolerance. Thank you.